I have some questions about homework eight and office hours today that I thought other students might have too. So let's take a look. First, we'll try to solve my filter together. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I'll give you a template to work with and some guidance. My filter is supposed to take in a list S and some predicate function that you can call on elements of S and it returns a list of all the elements in S for which pred called on that element is a true value. Now, if it turns out S is empty, then you should return an empty list. If the way you ask whether S is empty is like that and the way you return an empty list, well, there are actually many ways, nil, empty list, or just S, because now you know that it's empty. I like to write nil. One problem I saw with several students in office hours is that they tried to end the if there and write the rest of their code down here. But that's not how if works in scheme. Instead, you need to have the predicate, the consequent, and the alternative. And so the whole body of the define is one if, and you're done after that. Now it turns out the alternative is long and complicated in this case, but that does not mean you should add another parenthesis there. It just means you should go to the next line because it makes it easier to read. Where you go from here is to introduce another if because you want to know whether calling pred on the first element of s gives you a true or a false value. Why the first element of s? Well, the way you're going to construct the result is to either include the first element of s in the result or not, and then filter the rest of s. So you'll have to figure out an expression that's true only if calling pred on the first argument of s is a true value. And here the most common mistake I saw was people trying to call pred using syntax from Python. But that's not how you write it. Remember to call a procedure, you precede it by a parenthesis, then write the procedure's symbol, and then the arguments. So once we've figured out whether or not the car of s is true according to the predicate, we write down the filtered list when it is true, which could, should include car s in the result, and the filtered list when it's not true. And from here, you just have to know how cons works. Cons takes a single element. That's the first element in the resulting list, as well as the rest of the list. Let's see if we can map that onto the result that we want. If we my filter even over two, three, four, five, well, let's add a six in there just so you can see what's going on. The result should be two, four, and six, the even numbers. The way we should construct this is to cons the number two onto the rest of the list for six. Now, how are we gonna get that rest of the list? This thing is the first element of S Let's just call it car of s. That's what the two is. And then what about the four six? Well, that's the filtered cutter of s, which you could get by calling my filter on the cutter of s using the same predicate. Put those together, and you'll have the result when the first element is an even number. If it's not an even number, then you don't want to cons the car of s onto anything. You just want to compute the filtered coder of s and you're done. Okay, the next question was interleave, implement the function interleave, which takes two lists, list one and list two as arguments, and returns a new list that interleaves the elements. Read this part. That gives you some base cases. If one of the lists is empty, just return the other list. So let's deal with the case when they're not empty. Let's say list one is one, three, five. List two is two, four, six. We're supposed to build one, two, three, four, five, six. But 
3, 4, 5, 6 is the result of interleaving the rest of list 1 with the rest of list 2. So really what we're trying to do is cons the 1 onto the result of consing the 2 onto 3, 4, 5, 6. This gives you the same result, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this syntactic structure is what you're going to use in order to build the result of putting two elements onto the front of some longer list. Now, of course, this is not the only way. You could append a list containing 1, 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6. But I think the most common way to do it would be to cons on the first element, cons on the second element, and then there's the rest of the elements. So now your job is to figure out how this corresponds to list 1 and list 2. Well, in this example, what's the 1? That's the car of list 1. There it is. What's the 2? That's the car of list 2. And how do we get the 3, 4, 5, 6? That involves calling interleave on the cutter of list 1, which will give us the 3 and the 5, as well as the cutter of list 2, and that will give us the 4 and the 6. So putting all that together, you might have, after some base cases, case, another base case, you'll have to fill those in. You might reach the recursive case sorry, I'll make my parentheses look more like a real con. Um, you might reach the recursive case and now it's time to Con something onto con something onto something so that you build the whole interleaved list. Question three is accumulate. You want to aggregate all of the first n natural numbers where first you apply the term function to them and then you put them together with this thing called joiner which takes two arguments. Okay, so to work through an example, I think we need to define square of x times xx. And let's work through accumulate where we add together, starting with 5, the first three numbers, but we square them. This would be adding together the square of 1 with the result of adding together the square of 2, with the result of adding together the square of 3, and 5, the starting value. And we get 19. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 5. And it's important to note that this is the same as switching the order. So you could have square 1, square 2, square 3 like that. And this is usually how you do this problem. Because then you can just substitute. Instead of it always being plus, it's the joiner. Instead of it always being square, it's the term. Instead of it always being 3, it's the n. And what's left to do? Well, fill in the recursive part. This looks like accumulate plus 5, 2 square. And if it turns out that n is 0, then you're all the way down to this base case. Hopefully that'll give you some guidance. The last question on homework eight is no repeats, which is about taking a list of numbers and returning a list that has no repeated values. So you get the five and then the four, but then you skip the five and the four because you saw them already. You get the two, but then you skip the two and you end up with five, four, two. I like this example because we can break it up. The example looked like that. When this gets passed in as the list, then we definitely want to keep the car of the list in the result. How do we keep it? Well, that just means consing it on to something else. What we want to cons it on to is the list for two. But how do we generate this list for two? Well, that's not what you get when you make a recursive call no repeats under the cutter of the list. When you make a recursive call, no repeats under the cutter of the list, you're going to get 4, 5, 2. So let's go ahead and call that the 
No repeats cooter. You're going to have to figure out how to write that part, but I think you can do it. Once you have no repeats cooter, what you want to do is get rid of all the fives. Because in your cons version, you already have a five in the front. You want to cons that onto a list that doesn't have fives in it. And how could you achieve that? Well, call my filter. Write yourself a procedure that says the element you're looking for, that's, for example, x, is not equal to the car of the list. And then you can go ahead and filter this no repeats cutter. That will get you from 4, 5, 2, down to 4, 2, which is exactly what you want, to cons 5 on 2, in order to get the final result, 5, 4, 2, which is what you're looking for. Hopefully that gives you some guidance and good luck on the homework.